So we are back. Now the next speaker will be Kodrina Hilje. And uh, she is a technical geographer and open source JS power user, activity working on uh, improving open data and uh, at Terracinia. Since 2013, she is a Geo Charter member, and uh, right now she is uh, on. She's a board member of Geo. So welcome, Kudrina. Hi, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Okay, now you should see my screen. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And uh, so, the stage is for you. Thank you. Let me start my watch. So I'm sure I'm not um, extending. Okay. So, uh, hi everyone and um, greetings from Bucharest, Romania. I am here today to talk about um, uh, another way through which the European Commission is supporting the open source community and is uh, supporting the Open Data Initiative, uh, its reuse and its uptake uh, in, the, in, the entire, uh, in the entire community. So um, the context of our discussion is a European, uh, it's a European project um, called the GeoHarmonizer, EU-wide automated mapping system for harmonization of open data based on Phosphor-G and machine learning. We'll very shortly call it GeoHarmonizer, it's simpler. Um, as I mentioned, it's a project funded by the European Commission through one of its agency, HADEA Agency, which stands for Health and Digital um, uh, Executive Agency of the European Commission through a specific financial instrument um, connecting Europe facility. Um, the European Commission is paying for 75% of the development of this project and uh, with a duration of, uh, of development uh, from September 2019 until next year in, uh, in June. Uh, at the bottom of the slide, you can see the partners in the consortium. Uh, except for the uh, Technical University of Prague, uh, all the other uh, partners in the consortium are SMEs from different uh, from different um, European uh, member states, like the Open Geo Hub from the Netherlands, Mondialis from Germany, Terrasigna uh, from uh, uh, from Romania, and uh, MultiOne from Croatia. So I'm speaking in the name of a very big. Uh, a very big group of hardworking people uh, so um, to whom I thank and I love collaborating with. Uh, so, um, as I mentioned, the project uh, is practically an answer to a funding call that was uh, that was launched by the European Commission through that specific agency, and they have some specific requirements within the documentation of those calls. On the left, uh, on the left side, you can see their uh, their requirements. They wanted a solution that would support the reuse of information that is already available through the European. European data portal and through and through in 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 other um, in other uh, portals and environments and so on uh, a solution that would support the generation of cross-border services providing uh, access to a harmonized data set and the keyword is harmonized and cross-border um, and the creation of generic access services uh, to increase the HPC and data capacities of the European data infrastructure. And on the right side, uh, very, um, in a way, simply put, what we, uh, what we, uh, what we as a consortium proposed to the, to the European Commission was to develop a geo harmonizer, which uh, we developed as a web-based, scalable, and modular system, through which to provide access to harmonized data sets that we uh, obtained by processing. Um, uh, existing open data sets, local, uh, regional, or even global, using Phosphor G, of course, and uh, uh, for the processing, also state-of-the-art machine learning algorithms. Um, 
So basically, uh, in a way that I like to say, the, the geo-harmonizer is a love story between open data and open source. And in the next slides, I will uh, walk you through what we've been doing. Uh, but please keep in mind that we still have um, about I think seven or eight months to go. So there's still things that are uh, under development and uh, that uh, that we are preparing. So um, any kind of feedback from your side when using uh, our data sets or using the platform or reading the documents that we are providing is, uh, is very much appreciated and uh, looked forward. Uh, so uh, we mentioned that we wanted to do um, our solution, the geo harmonizer that we proposed to the Commission, uh, we wanted to build uh, using uh, using phosphor G, using free and open source software for geospatial, and that applies to the uh, web app that we uh, to the portal to the system itself, as well as to the uh, uh, libraries and software solutions that we use to process the data in order to obtain the harmonized. Um, um, uh, uh, data sets uh, with, we believe, added value. So uh, the system basically has four components. Uh, the front end is uh, was uh, was created with JavaScript and React using also open layers. And uh, I'll also show in a few moments that we also have a 3D component. And for that, we had uh, we have two uh, two. Uh, um, if I can say so, implementation. One is with Cesium. It's basically um, an extension for uh, a Cesium extension for uh, GeoServer. And the second one is uh, the uh, NASA Web World Wind. And I would invite you to watch my, uh, my colleague's presentation uh, with more details on the application. Um, but unfortunately, it is happening in the exact same moment. So uh, I hope you will catch it, uh, you'll catch the, the recording of it. Um, and also for serving, uh, for serving data through OGC, um, standard uh, OGC com uh, compliant uh, services, we use uh, GeoServer and for the vectors that we have uh, Postgres uh, database. Uh, for, the, um, uh, for the metadata, we have, of course, uh, Geo Network implementation and also uh, APIs for, uh, data, for data query. And uh, with respect to the softwares that we used for data processing, uh, we use Grass, QGIS, R, GDAL, and uh, um, and the such. Uh, this was related to the software that we used. Regarding the software uh, that uh, we we created, and if I can say so, in the in the framework of uh, of Geo Harmonizer. Um, we have a EU map library uh, that is um, that is publicly available. You have the link uh, of the library in the uh, in the presentation, and I can also copy paste it in the chat to be to to make it easier to access it. This is a library that uh, would ease the access of users to the uh, uh, to the data sets that we have created, as well as it um, it it. Um, uh, it uh, comprises of, uh, of functionalities uh, that we have used to create these data sets, like uh, gap filling methods and uh, and other and other things. Uh, and still under development, um, we have two experimental geo processing services. One is uh, implemented through the OGC WPS uh, stand um, uh, specification, and uh, that is um, available that that will be uh, accessible through the WPS plugin for QGIS that is being developed currently um, under the Geo Harmonizer framework uh, by uh, CTU in collaboration with OpenGeo Labs and also an extension for GeoServer uh, for um, um, uh, Actinia uh, processed uh, geodata for serving Actinia geoprocessed uh, uh, data. Um, 
Uh, going further, you have probably noticed uh, an asterisk uh, when I mentioned the name of the the full name of the of the GeoHarmonizer project. Um, due to the uh, data that we used in order to uh, to create the harmonized uh, added value data sets, uh, unfortunately, uh, we could not include the entire uh, continental. Um, uh, European uh, uh, Europe. Um, so you can you can see on this slide all the all the countries that have been that have been included. So it is bigger than the European Union, but not uh, not uh, comprising uh, with the entire continental uh, region. The reason is that uh, for uh, land cover and for potential natural vegetation maps, uh, we have used two data sets. Uh, that um, do not uh, have information on uh, the Republic of Moldova, Belarus, and Ukraine. And I am talking here about the Lucas data set. Uh, the Lucas data set, for those that are not familiar with it, it's a data set, uh, it's a land use and cover area survey. It's um, an activity, it's a data set, uh, you know, with the activity to, to collect it, uh, to maintain it, and to uh, to um, improve it, uh, an activity um, led by Eurostat uh, and uh, the European Atlas of, of Forest uh, Tree Species. Uh, on this slide, you can also see some other data sets and databases uh, that were used for the creation of the uh, geo-harmonized uh, map layers that uh, are available or will be very shortly available on the geo-harmonized um, web app, and I will not uh, not insist on on this one. Um, and uh, this is just a short list of uh, what is currently available on uh, on the GeoHarmonizer web uh, app. We have at this point about. Um, believe over 20 terabytes of data. What is raster is uh, as uh, cloud optimized GeoTIFF. The vector is uh, within the Postgres SQL database. And here is just a list of, uh, of them. Uh, so we have the annual dominant land cover class um, and I'll go a bit faster. Uh, air quality maps, um, and uh, and uh, um, uh, um, actual and potential vegetation maps for five forest tree species at 120 meters resolution um, and uh, data uh, uh, processed from the Copernicus Emergency Rapid Mapping uh, Service for uh, the geoharmonizer regions for two uh, two types of events, flood events and fire disturbances. Um, what I would like to mention at this point is that um, we uh, we have organized a workshop, and I will try to yeah, we have organized a workshop about uh, three weeks ago in which uh, presentations like. Um, Comprehensive presentations of, of how these data sets have been uh, have been uh, obtained um, were uh, were made by uh, by the consortium, and uh, all the presentations have been uh, all the presentations have been recorded. Uh, I think my internet is not that good. Uh, all the presentations have been recorded and are accessible on YouTube. Also, the slides will be available through the pre-talk instance that we used for the uh, for the organizing of the workshop. So, more details on the limitations of these data sets and um, the um, uh, the added value that was brought uh, and how they were uh, how they were made can be can be identified uh, can be identified in these uh, in these presentations uh, that I, I invite you to to take a look. Um, as I mentioned, uh, all uh, all data sets are being documented, are documented, and the metadata is stored in a geo network instance. Uh, the um, our our uh, metadata portal is being harvested by the European data portal. This was also a requirement from the European Commission uh, to, uh, uh, to to having these uh, these two uh, portals interact. <laughs> um, 
and uh, maybe I could show you a bit how the uh, how the uh, web uh, um, how our web application uh, looks like. Um, so this is the, uh, I hope everything is okay. You can see my screen and you can see the application. You can see that we've tried to make it as intuitively as, as possible. Um, uh, you can search through the location on the right, uh, right hand side. You can search through all the layers that are available at this point. Uh, I'd like to mention that um, uh, second, uh, the second version will be available, uh, I believe, we, within, about, uh, within about a month. And also uh, additional data sets will, uh, will, be, will be added. And an exciting feature that I um, that I like is a compare feature that uh, that we have, allowing uh, users to compare the data sets that are um, uh, that are uh, loaded, that are accessible through the uh, uh, through the data uh, through the uh, web app. Uh, for example, we can. Um, let's say choose to see how temperature ha temperatures have varied let's say on january the 1st 2010 and then we can go in 2020 and see how these have been here you can have a so this is this is uh, this is one functionality. Um, also, uh, we've tried to document as well as possible everything that is available in the in the uh, web app. Uh, elements related to the uh, licenses of the data sets that we have used, the disclaimer, and also we have prepared uh, specific information on how to access this, uh, this data set. Uh, there is a possibility to easily download uh, every, every, uh, every data set um, through the OpenGeoHub WhatsApp.com uh, service. Uh, all the information on how to do that, either with Python, with R, or um, can be, or through a W, uh, MS, or FS, depending on the, the type of data that you want to, to access. Um, okay, I'll go further. Uh, I have three more minutes, so I will be done very, very shortly. Uh, of course, being a European uh, European project, we also have some uh, some serious documentation that uh, we are uh, we are making available on the website uh, of the project. Uh, also, we have peer-reviewed articles that are being uh, that are being published uh, or. Uh, uh, um, not peer reviewed some some articles for popular popularizing what what we do for example through medium.com and also various uh, let's call them document documents to deliver like the metrics comparison of technology for automated uh, data harmonization um, everything that I've mentioned at this uh, at this point is also available through for example this progress report that we have um, that we have posted on the uh, on the website you can uh, find here all the links to the libraries the plugins um, uh, to different uh, to the different um, articles that we have published uh, the training materials because during the uh, the Wacheningen workshop that I mentioned and that uh, happened about uh, three weeks ago, uh, we had uh, two days of extended uh, workshops for uh, uh, R, for Python, and also for Grass. And all the uh, recordings are available as well as the uh, as well as the um, materials to to follow to follow along. So please feel free to to browse through through that um, through all that uh, documentation. So um, I believe um, I believe I am done, but not completely. Uh, I would also like to announce that um, 
with the occasion of uh, finishing this project in June 2022, we will organize um, the final workshop um, which will be uh, which will be held in Prague, and uh, where we will present um, also the uh, we'll have presentations on the uh, final versions of the uh, software created on the data sets that we have uh, obtained, and um, and of of course also from uh, from other uh, from other speakers outside of the consortium, but with uh, uh, with presentations relevant to the GeoHarmonizer project. So that would be all from my side. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Katrina. Especially to be on time. <laughs> yes. So let's see if there are some, there are no questions from the audience right now. So I'm going to ask something. Okay. Um, all the data the, that you were speaking more than 20 tera, where are they stored? So um, they are stored on watsabi.com. It's a service that uh, that we have uh, for especially for this for this project and uh, also on uh, the Open Geo Hub, one of the partners infrastructure. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also, also, um, we are planning by the end of the project for all the data sets, the final, the final version of the data sets will be uh, uploaded on Zenodo, zenodo.org. We also have some data sets there at this point, but I don't think they're all of them, but we'll also upload them uh, there. And Zenodo accept a uh, so big uh, data, data set? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. That's good because uh, it will remain uh, always there and with the uh, DOI and everything. So exactly, exactly. Also for the for the digital object identifier. Yes. And uh, a question from the audience. Uh, it's uh, this one. So is the development development of NASA World Wind still active? Why both uh, WW and Cesium? Uh, both because um, we wanted to to um, to give the opportunity to the community to test them both um, and to 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 use whatever they would feel comfortable with. Um, and um, for the second question, I would need to uh, I would need to check with my with my colleagues. So, if a second world wind, um, could you please repeat? Uh, why both? Uh, no, uh, this is the second. The first one was if, if uh, the NASA World Wind is still active, the development. Uh, well, um, I I don't I don't know if it is active, but I I'll have to I'll have to ask my my colleague that has worked at this uh, the at the implementation. She's actually you know she's actually finishing presenting now. I'm not sure in which room, so <laughs> we can just uh, hurry and... Uh, and uh, no, but I think that it's possible to check on the source code uh, repository if it's directable or not. Yeah. Other question is, uh, can you give some more detail on uh, how tools like Actinia, WPS and QGS uh, are used concretely in the project? Well, we are. Uh, we wanted to have experimental services for uh, for the geo processing, and um, they're just um, um, a test uh, to uh, to have a to have an implementation for uh, for Actinia. At this point, they're not uh, they're not uh, fully functional, but um, I believe that by the end of this year, they will uh, they will uh, uh, they will work. So. I'm not sure I answered the question. No. I think yes. So, no other uh, question? You have uh, one minute to say something more if you want. 
Uh, well, thank you everyone for uh, for paying attention to to my presentations. Uh, please check the check the the website of the uh, of this project because everything we're doing we try to publish uh, and to put it online as fast of, as possible. And please send feedback on whatever you use. If you see any kind of uh, I don't know um, mishaps in the data or errors, that would be extremely useful for us. We still have some time to. To correct and to make it work better so that would be absolutely wonderful if you could just have a look and um, give your feedback thanks okay thanks uh, maybe I have one more question is the workshop open for everyone the final yes. one yes yes and the one in Wageningen was also also uh -huh. open we are trying to uh, popularize it and talk about disseminate the information as as much as possible the one in Wageningen was a hybrid one so we also had people present about uh, I think we were about 40 something like that but uh, also online and uh, for Prague depending on the um, on the general situation, yeah. yes, we we are we are planning to to keep a same a same approach. Uh, not easy one with a hybrid, but it's definitely something that we are considering of continuing. So yes, it is open. Short answer: yes. Please come. <laughs> okay. So thanks a lot, Katrina. Thank and, you. Uh, we will be back in uh, four minutes. Thanks.